no place in our communities or in the United States of America for such horrific acts. Out of North Idaho tonight after the University of Utah women's basketball team said that they were harassed in downtown Coeur d'Alene last week. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Creme 2 has been in Coeur d'Alene all day digging for more information about this. Many community members tonight are condemning that hateful act aimed at the University of Utah women's basketball team and asking for witnesses to come forward. The police report describes what happened in public on a busy street in downtown Coeur d'Alene right after after the Utah women's team arrived in town. The team was so shaken they actually left Idaho and came to a hotel in Spokane. Well today everyone from community leaders to the governor and university officials are condemning what happened saying racism, bigotry and hatred have no place in Idaho or anywhere else. Racism is real and it happens and it's uh, it's awful. That's Lynn Roberts, the University of Utah head women's basketball coach last night following their game against Gonzaga, where she described racist acts against her team while they were staying in Coeur d'Alene last week. And it was really upsetting. And for our players and, and staff to not feel safe in an NCAA tournament environment, um, it's messed up. A day later, we're getting a clearer picture of what happened. In this police report filed with the Coeur d'Alene Police Department, it states that last Thursday evening, the team had gone out to craft it. The restaurant sharing with us this video of the team walking in and later back out. The report states, at approximately 1800 hours or 6 p.m., two lifted pickups were revving their engines and speeding by the team as they walked down Sherman Avenue. It continues. The trucks then turned around and came back toward the team and yelled the N-word at them as many of their players are African American and that the incident caused a well-founded fear among the players. The next day, the team left Coeur d'Alene and moved to a new hotel in Spokane. This is a very sober and serious day. That's Tony Stewart with the Kootenai County Task Force on Human Relations. Today, he, along with other community leaders, held a press conference to address the incident. I want to make it very clear and very loud that we condemn the strongest, in the strongest terms those horrendous acts of hatred, and if the perpetrators can be found, we call upon them to be prosecuted. Coeur d'Alene Mayor Jim Hammond addressed the University of Utah team directly. To the young women who endured racial slurs while visiting, I offer my most sincere apology. We, all of us, stand with you. We embrace you. We celebrate your accomplishments and strongly denounce any malicious treatment toward you. Idaho Governor Brad Little also weighing in today, writing in part, we fully reject racism in all its forms. There is no place for racism, hate, or bigotry in the great state of Idaho. We condemn bullies who seek to harass and silence others. This should be a joyous time for our program. And to have kind of a black eye on that experience is unfortunate. So where does all of this go from here? Well, Coeur d'Alene Police Chief Lee White says they are actively looking for video of that incident. He also said they have not been able to talk to the victims yet, but there are a number of crimes that they are investigating, including malicious harassment and disorderly conduct. So if you saw what happened or have video of it, you are urged to contact Coeur d'Alene Police. And Coeur d'Alene City officials say they are investigating this incident as a potential hate crime and even getting the FBI involved. In our effort to bring you more to every story, we looked into what constitutes a hate crime in the state of Idaho. So using a racial slur is actually protected speech under the First Amendment. However, that changes if someone uses such language to specifically intimidate or harass someone. So in Idaho, this law is called malicious harassment. And in a report from Idaho State Police in 2022, hate crimes are subjective to the motives of the offender. The law says those offenders motives must be malicious and intended to intimidate or harass a person based on race, religion, ancestry or nationality. It does not protect people of different abilities, sexual orientation or gender, according to data from the Department of Justice. Justice. In 2022, Idaho law enforcement investigated 40 hate crimes. 28 of those were motivated by race, they said. So the impact of this racist act has many people shocked all across Coeur d'Alene. Graham 2's Nathan Hyun has been talking with people about how they're feeling tonight. He joins us live in Coeur d'Alene tonight with more. Nathan? 
Mark Whitney, I'm by Crafted Tap House and Kitchen, a popular restaurant here in Coeur d'Alene, and this is where the University of Utah women's basketball team ate during the night of the alleged incident. Most people consider Sherman Avenue in downtown Coeur d'Alene to be safe. I don't think it should happen anywhere. We're all equal. So it came as quite a surprise when Marcy Gillespie heard of Thursday's alleged racist incident. The people are great. Most everybody's friendly, so I'm surprised to hear that happen. Gillespie has lived in Coeur d'Alene for more than 30 years. She's a manager of a business on Sherman Avenue. She says she sees many people out and about at night and no one ever has to worry. It's a beautiful place. It's a great place to live. And most of us, as far as I know, we love everybody and welcome everybody. On Thursday night, the Utah women's basketball team says they had racial slurs thrown at them while walking to a restaurant and then walking back to their hotel on Sherman Avenue. Honestly, I was kind of embarrassed that this would happen downtown. Junior Muchtaba is a general manager at Crafted Tap House and Kitchen in downtown Coeur d'Alene. His restaurant hosted the team on Thursday. This was the time where tourists would come in town and there's nobody here and so to have a 90 top over at Crafted was great business and I was really excited and just to hear how, how they got treated, it was really sad and embarrassing. Muchtaba says what allegedly happened to the team should have never happened. This is ridiculous and they should have never been treated like that. With tourism season right around the corner, Gillespie hopes it doesn't deter people. It is a huge tourist area for you to, for anyone to do something like that is not setting a very good picture of Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> And I've been in the area all day asking businesses if they have surveillance video from the night of the alleged incident or heard anything. They do not, but they do say they hope the people responsible for the alleged incident are found. Live in Coeur d'Alene, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. All right, Nathan, thank you very much. And we also spoke to the CEO of Spokane Sports. They're the ones who submitted the bid for Spokane to host the NCAA tournament games here in Spokane. So she told me today the organization focuses all year long on promoting Spokane as a perfect location for sports events. And she says she is beyond disappointed at what happened. So for us, it was this pinnacle achievement um, for our city that we had all of these resources to ensure that Spokane was presented in the best possible light. And then to hear that a team was treated, you know, incredibly unfairly and put in a hostile situation is, is just a tremendous um, sad point.